how to become a neurologist. The educational path to becoming a neurologist is long and arduous and reserved for top students. The steps to become a neurologist after high school are Step 1. Earn a bachelor's degree. Most medical schools require the completion of a bachelor's degree as a prerequisite to entering medical school. In addition, many courses in biology, chemistry, and mathematics are required. For this reason, many students major in biology or chemistry, but there is not one particular major that is required. Step 2. Take the Medical College Admission Test, MCAT. The Medical College Admission Test, MCAT, is taken usually in the third year of undergraduate college. It is required for entrance into most U.S. medical school programs. This seven and a half hour standardized multiple choice test is designed to evaluate problem solving skills, critical thinking, and familiarity with the ideas and concepts in the natural, behavioral, and social sciences that are necessary for the study of medicine. Medical school admission staff review this score to gain an understanding of the abilities students have learned in college thus far. If you wish to be given an opportunity for an interview or admission into a medical school, you must get a high score on this test. Most U.S. and Canadian medical schools use computer-based algorithms and will filter applicants if MCAT scores are below a certain number. One should prepare for the MCAT by enrolling in specialized preparatory courses to achieve the highest possible score as admittance to these medical schools is extremely tough. Step 3. Attend medical school at an allopathic or osteopathic medical program. Medical school is four years in length and can be broken down into two distinct parts. During the first two years of med school, students learn basic medical sciences which are didactic in nature and are a combination of lecture and lab courses. While the courses studied during these two years may vary from one school to another, traditional courses taught during this period of time include pathology, microbiology, pharmacology, biochemistry, and anatomy. Additionally, students learn the fundamentals of history taking and examining patients. Traditionally, at the end of year two, Students take their first medical board examination, the USMLE Step 1 for MD allopathy students or COMLEX Level 1 for DO osteopathy students. This is often thought of as the most difficult test a medical student will ever take. Passing Step 1 is required for initial state licensure during intern year and neurology residency. In the second two years of medical school, students complete the clinical skill portion of med school. This is 100% hands-on education and training that occurs at teaching hospitals across the U.S. and Canada. During this time, medical students in their third and fourth year complete rotations at clinics and hospitals. At these clerkship sites, students engage with patients and carry out routine medical procedures as well as follow instructions from residents and attending physicians. Before graduation, every medical student must complete a set of required rotations. These are called core rotations and are completed during third year. During core rotations, students rotate through many different medical specialties including pediatrics, internal medicine, OBGYN, family medicine, psychiatry, emergency medicine, general surgery, and neurology. Many students take the USMLE Step 2 and COMLEX Level 2 examination at the end of the third year 
as the material covered on this examination is directly related to what is learned during third year rotations. Similar to st step one and level one, passing step two, level two is required for medical licensure in all states. At this time, step two and level two result in a numerical score. This score is used to compare medical students when it comes to applying for residency, so it is vital to obtain a good score. For most students, the fourth year of medical school is spent exclusively in elective rotations. These rotations serve two purposes. The first purpose is to expose students to medical specialties other than those available during core rotations, such as cardiology, dermatology, ophthalmology, radiology, and pathology, just to name a few. The second purpose is to arrange elective rotations at teaching hospitals that a student may wish to attend residency at. These are sometimes referred to as audition rotations as they give residency directors the opportunity to get to know students and their work ethic. This also gives students the opportunity to decide if they would be a good fit inside a particular residency program. While clinical rotations won't provide you with an in-depth knowledge you need to practice medicine in a medical specialty such as neurology, they will broaden your knowledge and assist you in thinking about prospective career possibilities. Step four, get licensed in the state the internship residency program is located in. In order to become licensed, medical students must pass the United States Medical Licensing Examination, USMLE, step one and step two for allopathy students or the complex level one and level two examination for osteopathy students. Becoming licensed also requires graduating from an accredited MD or DO medical school program. Licensure for intern year and residency is a limited license as all interns residents must see patients under supervision. Step five, attend an intern year. Graduates of medical schools who want to become a neurologist must complete a one-year-long period of training as a hospital intern. This is commonly called an intern year. Aspiring neurologists often complete their internships in internal medicine, although they frequently rotate across departments to gain exposure to various medical specialties. Interns must practice within the parameters of the program that they are enrolled in since they are not entitled to the option of practicing medicine unsupervised. Step 6. Attend a residency program. After intern year, a three-year residency program in neurology must be completed. It is during residency that the bulk of clinical education about neurology and practicing as a neurologist is learned. Residency programs are lengthy and demanding, but because residents are developing their clinical expertise in the profession they have worked so hard to get into, it can also be fun. Residents work with patients as well as attend lectures and participate in discussions about real case reports. With the supervising neurologists, residents go on hospital rounds and have the opportunity to observe patients and do their own examinations. During this time, residents gain knowledge of a variety of neurological conditions, including headaches, epilepsy, stroke, spinal cord injuries, and Parkinson's disease. Step seven, attend a subspecialty fellowship, optional. Some neurologists choose to continue their education by attending a fellowship program. Fellowships are reserved for the best and brightest neurology residents. Fellowships can last up to four years. According to AAMC Careers in Medicine, the subspecialties include but may not be limited to brain injury medicine, one year in duration, child neurology, pediatric neurology, two years in duration, 
clinical neurophysiology, one year in duration, epilepsy, one to two years in duration, neurocritical care, one to two years in duration, neuromuscular medicine, one to two years in duration, pain medicine, one year in duration, sleep medicine, one year in duration, vascular neurology, one to two years in duration. If a neurologist decides to complete more than one fellowship, the training duration can be linked. Step eight, become board certified. Board certification is not necessary for licensure, but is required by most employers such as hospitals and clinics. It also is a way to differentiate oneself and stand out amongst patients. It can also give a competitive advantage in medical specialties in large urban communities. Continuing medical education is required after certification is obtained.